Hey guys, it's Katie. Thanks for stopping by my channel and welcome back to Cookie Week. I'm posting a new cookie recipe video on my channel every day this week, so I hope you'll sub subscribe and join the fun. Today I'm making Anna's Chews from the King Arthur uh, Baking Company Cookie Companion. I got this book from the library, but I will link it down in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. Um, these look like pretty simple cookies and they're flavored with Anna's seed. So if you don't care for black licorice, then this might not be the cookie for you, but um, I really like black licorice and I really like anise, especially at Christmas time. There's a lot of traditional Italian cookies that have anise flavor in them and I really like that. So we're gonna try them out. Um, it says that you can leave out the anise seed and then it would just be kind of a, I guess a sugar cookie, but it's made with brown sugar. So anyway, we'll see how these turn out. Okay, we're gonna start with some butter. I'm using dairy-free margarine. I use the country crock plant butter. It's one of the easiest ones for me to find. That's a reasonable price, so I use it in pretty much everything nowadays. Okay, to that I'm gonna add brown sugar. And I'm gonna cream those together with the paddle attachment. I'm going to add one egg. Mix it. Scrape that down. Next I'm going to measure out the dry ingredients. So there's just a little bit of baking soda. Some salt. And I go pretty light on the salt, um, especially on recipes that specify unsalted butter. Because the vegan margarine, is, you can't find it unsalted. I've never found it unsalted, so uh, I just lessen the salt other places in the recipe. I'm going to add the flour. And it calls for two to four tablespoons of anise seed. So I found them like this. Um, this was very reasonably priced. I think this was like $1.30 for one and a quarter ounces. If you go into um, like regular grocery store, like the McCormick, McCormick seasoning section, you'll find a little bottle and it'll be several dollars. So I got this at our local international supermarket and there's actually several different brands to choose from. Um, but usually they're like in little packets. They're not in nice, you know, reclosable bags or anything like that, but it's worth it for the cost savings for me. And the recipe calls for two to four tablespoons. It said it can be as gentle or as assertive as you like. And I've never made this before, so I'm not sure how assertive I want them. Mmm, they smell really good. The seeds have a really good fragrance. I think, logically, I would do two, and then if I like it next time, I could do four. I don't know if we're using logic tonight, but that's the logical thing. Might also be logical to do one, but I like anise, and everyone in my family does, so this is a pretty small batch. Let's go for two. I'll go ahead and add them to the dry ingredients. I was looking at another anise recipe, and it said to crush the seeds lightly in a mortar and pestle. This doesn't say anything about that, so I'm just going to follow the recipe, but that could be something um, that you could try. Let's, let's do two full tablespoons and get this added to the butter sugar mixture. It doesn't call for any vanilla or anything like that. So we're just gonna put that all in and let it mix. Do a quick scrape down, make sure everything is evenly distributed. Okay, looks like that. I can't wait to bake these. It already smells so good just for mixing up the dough. And the dough is kind of soft. I tend to have that problem with the, um, the dairy-free margarine, but I'm just gonna go ahead and chill it and we'll work on it from there. The other thing is the recipe calls for that it makes four and a half dozen. It says drop by teaspoonfuls onto the cookie sheet. Um, and this is, I mean, that's not very much <laughs> dough. So I'm imagining these are supposed to be pretty small. I'm not sure if I can use my cookie scoop. All right, so I don't think I'm gonna get four and a half dozen cookies. 
using the scooper, but I'm gonna scoop it out and see what we're working with and then I might divide each cookie in half. So I'm not sure if maybe because these have a stronger flavor, maybe they're meant to be small. Uh, I don't know. Also, um, you might notice I don't, I try not to drag my cookie scoop up my glass um, bowl because I've noticed that it scratches on this bowl and like some of my Pyrex bowls. So I usually just scrape it against a spatula because it's a lot easier and cheaper to replace a spatula than some of my favorite, especially my vintage Pyrex bowls. I really like this cookbook, but there's not that many pictures, especially considering they have some very interesting and unique um, cookie ideas. So I wish there were more pictures. Right, so I'm supposed to get four and a half dozen and I got not even two dozen. So each of these cookies needs to be at least half of the size, right? Maybe even less. Um, I think I'm going to chill them and then when I roll them, I can just pinch them in half. So I'll put these in the fridge for right now. All right, so these have chilled and I'm just going to cut them in half. If I had a smaller cookie scoop, this would have all been one step or if you just want to sort of eyeball it. So I'm going to roll these so they're more like a ball shape and I'm just going to bake a tray of these and the rest I'm going to put in the freezer. So after I get probably a dozen here, the ones that I'm not going to bake now, I just put inside this bag and I have it flat on this tray. I'm trying to keep them separated as much as I can. And then I'll freeze it like this. And then once they're frozen solid, then I can you know, lift up the bag and store it in the freezer for a longer term. A lot of times I just put them in the freezer, but because these have such a strong smell, um, I don't want my freezer to smell like anise and I don't want the anise flavor to be lost. So I'm just putting them in the bag right away. I want to try, maybe just for one or two, I'm going to roll them in sugar. Since I've rolled them into ni nice tidy little balls, just to see if I like that. Sugar crusted cookies are kind of my favorite. So we'll just do two. And then these are ready to go in the 375 degree Fahrenheit oven for eight to nine minutes. So they look like they're so cute. I love them. These were the ones that I put sugar on. Not super noticeable in the finished product. Maybe if it was coarser, it was worth a try. Okay, here's the finished cookie. It's super cute. Little petite little thing with the little flex in it. It looks really cute. Bottom nicely browned and I'll see if I can break it in half. It's kind of small. Oh yeah. Yeah, I can see. I thought they might be a little crispy. They like the edge, the bottom and the edge is crispy, but they are definitely a chewy cookie. Ooh. Mmm. Mm-hmm. I really like that. Mm. The flavor is not super strong, so we use two tablespoons. Definitely could go up, but from what I know of other anise cookies, like when I make anise, anise pistels, uh, the flavor develops over a few days. So I'm gonna wait and see if they get a little stronger over time. But right now, it's perfectly mild. I think even people who normally say they don't like black licorice would probably like these. I think these would be really good with like coffee or tea too. So. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, you can give my video a thumbs up. If you try this recipe, I'd love to know what you think of it. You can leave me comments down below. And thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.